Welcome to City Connection. I'm Casey Drescher. We're excited to launch this quick look at city happenings so you can dive deeper into what's going on in your city. Stay informed and connected. Our first story, about 90% of California's coastal wetlands have been filled and covered with development. The Andre Clark Bird Refuge makes up a portion of the remainder, and the City Creeks Division hope their natural, low-tech approach will help restore this 42-acre park and 29-acre lake in the heart of Santa Barbara. The Bird Refuge has been a unique ecological system in the city since it was dammed up 100 years ago. Well, that dam has been in place. The bird refuge is not able to flush out water to the ocean and have a tidal exchange like it had uh, in its natural condition. And so what we are trying to do is restore, in an incremental way, restore the function of the bird refuge. Evidence in historical writings, maps, and photographs point to poor water quality conditions and strong odors at the lake since the 1930s. When we get those odor events, uh, we get a lot of complaints at the city, like, why, why is the bird refuge smelling? And so we hoped by improving the water quality and, the, and the, improving oxygen levels in there that we will have fewer of those odor events. And if we do have them, that they will last shorter in duration. This has been an issue and a problem for the city of Santa Barbara for about almost 90 years now. And so we're, we're finally getting around to being able to take steps to try to improve that situation. Starting with natural drainage and tidal exchange. In place of that dam, we're going to install some, uh, some gates, some openings so that when we have rainstorms, we can open up the, the gates and allow the water to flush out to the ocean. And when a certain rain threshold has been met, no more flooding on Cabrillo Boulevard. We will be able to go out onto the beach and lower the height of that sand berm to allow it to naturally breach as the water level increases in the bird refuge. Another big part of the project deals with dune restoration and a slight expansion of the coastal estuary. We're going to remove some non-natives and put in more native species. So that whenever you have native species, that they, they provide seeds and bugs that the, that the native birds are used to eating and provides a food supply for them. So when you change the vegetation, that's kind of the foundation of the habitat for all the other species. And so that will um, improve habitat in that way. An improved habitat that could eventually usher in bird diversity, the circle of life, if you will. Higher oxygen will allow fish to survive, better for other microorganisms and aquatic organisms that can live here, and those provide food again for the birds and, and help to keep the water cleaner. Restoration work is expected to last until December, and Creek staff emphasize that since they're working with the natural elements of the refuge, change will be incremental. Creeks hope to wrap up the construction in December, but again, stress that we will have to wait for rainfall and time to see improvements. Every September, we observe National Preparedness Month and raise awareness about the importance of preparing for disasters and emergencies before they strike. This year's theme is a lasting legacy. Prepare for disaster and create a lasting legacy for you and your family. This National Preparedness Month, the City Fire Department is reminding you to build or replace items in your family's emergency kit. Don't forget to include non-perishable food and water, flashlights, radios, and extra batteries and first aid equipment. And remember to register for local alerts with readysbc.org. In addition to the installation of the new high-low siren on police vehicles, the police department is utilizing another intuitive way of policing. Last month, SBPD rolled out three e-bikes adding to their fleet. Thanks to grant funding, police now have an additional way of patrolling, and officers call them a more modern and effective tool in their inventory. Residents are likely to see these bikes in action, patrolling State Street, the waterfront, and even on the Mesa and Milpas Street. The officers enjoy it, and two really big benefits of the e-bikes is, is that it expands uh, the ability for these officers to respond and reduces the response time. It really allows us to be more in contact with people 
uh, be out and about within the community and have a uh, really good positive interaction with those members that our bicycle patrol officers uh, contact on a daily basis. Officers ride in partners and are able to patrol a larger geographical area traveling at speeds up to 28 miles per hour. And now a traveling parent in need of a private space to breastfeed or pump now has a new amenity to utilize at the airport. The airport is proud to announce the addition of a private and secure lactation pod on the second floor of the terminal building past the TSA security checkpoint and just to the right of gate two. A parent in need of this facility can access the lactation pod through an app so it's private and secure. Airport staff also took great care in designing the space so it fits right in with Santa Barbara's old Spanish style. Stay in the know and follow the city on our social platforms. And be sure to sign up for our weekly newsletter, City News in Brief. We're always there for you online at santabarbaraca.gov. Thanks for watching City Connection. We'll see you next time.